friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a hard cataract with small people let us observe management of this case the patient is under topical anesthesia the main incision and a side port has been made the anti capsule has been stained with trypan blue dye the dye is being washed out using bss and now 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is used to underfill the anterior chamber and the visco is injected under the iris to make some room for a people expansion device which in this case is a bhex ring and here it goes the leading flange goes the trailing flange if it is not stuck in the main wound the leading flange is tucked under the iris at on go now i tuck the flange on the left side which is directed towards one o'clock now inject visco the air bubble is decreasing visibility that is that is expressed out and now the bhex forceps goes through the side port in this case there is only one side port and the flange which is directed towards 10 o'clock is tucked and the people takes a beautiful hexagonal shape size of this people is about 5.5 mm and the size of the rexis is going to be about 5 mm the staining was not good in this case and visibility is not very good to improve visibility i apply some visco over the corneal epithelium and now i can see a bit better use the uterite again to complete the capsulorexis the continuous curvilinear capsulorexis is completed and now hydro dissection is done very small amount of bss is injected under the rexis margin at multiple points the nucleus is nudged and the nucleus rotates visco is again used to fill up the anterior chamber and now here goes the fecal needle this is a 2.2 needle 2.2 mm needle going through 2.8 mm wound and here it is some superficial lens matter is removed the hand piece is then turned to make the bubble up and now watch submarine chop the tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus it travels through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator and now the chopper is used to make a very good crack rotate the nucleus 180 degree go to a deeper plane and the two hemineuclei are completely separated now i come to one hemineuclius and chop this hemineuclius into two pieces one piece is tilted and it is emulsified ultrasonic energy used in this case is 80% flow rate is 40 vacuum is 400 mm of mercury the other piece is also tilted and it is also emulsified the ultrasonic energy is in continuous mode and now this is the other hemineuclius it is chopped into two pieces and the pieces are emulsified you can see there's a there's an air bubble sticking to the corneal endothelium the air bubble is not moving which means the fluid turbulence is not much and which is a good sign means the corneal endothelium is not 
disturbed much. So, co nucleus as well as epinucleus both has come out in this case and very little amount of cortex is there. tried to remove some cortex which may be under the iris, but I find that there is nothing is there. But I find that there are some cells sticking to the posterior capsule on the right side near the 8 to 11 o'clock rexis margin. I took the irrigation cannula and separated the cells from the posterior capsule. Nicely it got separated and now I can use the Simco to remove these cells. Inject little bit of visco again to protect the corneal endothelium. Enlarge the side port little bit and use the Simco 23 cores to remove these cells from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock. In this case, we have selected a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal aspheric intraocular lens and a very good lens. In cases where there is B hex, we must enlarge the main wound and the tip of the cartridge should go beyond the part of the B hex ring which is just in front of the main wound. So, I am enlarging the main wound little bit and now here goes the cartridge with the intraocular lens. The lens leading haptic goes and the trailing haptic also goes into the capsular bag. And now, the B hex ring is removed. The flange at 4 o'clock is held. The B hex ring is mobilized, untucked, and it is removed. And now, the visco, which is filling up the anterior chamber as well as the capsular bag, is removed. You must go behind the intraocular lens and irrigate the capsular bag and remove all the visco which is trapped behind the intraocular lens. Unless we remove this visco from behind the lens, the visco that is between the posterior capsule and the intraocular lens, it can increase the intraocular pressure. And patient may have steamy corneal edema. This is irrigation aspiration cannula. Some cortical fibers is being removed at this time. Whatever comes So, we are towards the end of this surgery. This is a bit of moxifloxacin. The side port is nicely closed. How? The antechamber was becoming flat, so air has been injected to keep the antechamber formed. Now, the corneal stroma on either side of the side port is hydrated. 
In this case, I hydrated the main wound also a bit because the antechamber was tending to become shallow. This is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. After a thorough lavage, the antechamber is nicely formed. And then the integrity of the wounds are checked. There should not be any leakage from any side. The intraocular pressure should be on the higher side. The eyeball should be firm and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.